Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some cherry blossom. We're going to do a double flowering, double petaled white cherry blossom. So it's going to be a really fantastic project for painting white onto white paper. So grab your paints and let's get started. So I do have a cherry blossom um, project in my book, New Botanical Painting, but it is a single layer of petals, got a slight pink tone to it. Um, there are so many different varieties and I just think it's a wonderful opportunity to keep learning. So this is a sample that for, has come from our neighbour's tree. She's got beautiful cherry blossoms and you can see there are sort of two layers of petals in there. These are white and then they have green uh, sepals and leaves and buds. So we are going to have a go at painting that. So I'll just pop you up in the corner for a moment. Now, I am going to draw in a sort of slightly curved stem bud there and then we're going to have our flowers coming off there and a few leaves, just like our real sample. And we're going to begin by looking at this extremely delicate white flower that seems like an impossibility to paint in watercolour. Now we do have a white, but that is, it's sort of more of a sort of um, like a semi-opaque kind of, um, like it almost thickens paint a little bit. It's not so much to be used, but I mean, we'll, we'll pop a little bit in because it's quite interesting because I normally don't use uh, an actual white, but um, it'll help sort of build our pigment. But really what we're looking for is the really subtle sort of yellows and green tones that might be found in a white petal. So I'm going to just sort of build up a very sort of pale colour. See that? looks at the moment like how on earth would that look like a white petal on the page well even if you don't have um, white watercolour paint going on so I'll just move it down so we can actually see that a bit better there we go what I'm doing is the more water I add it just becomes more and more delicate and more gentle but I'm also going to drop in the tiniest bit of sort of a, a shadowy mix which again seems a bit mad, but honestly, it is just all these colours, if you get them sort of pared down to their absolute translucent basics, you suddenly get, aha, a colour that is going to work really, really nicely on the page. So that very sort of translucent petal colour, which I will get a bit of scrap paper so we can have a little look at what it looks like. So it is barely there, it is hard to see, but the beauty of this kind of painting is when it dries, it will dry with a crisp edge and suddenly these tones that are seemingly invisible and also imperceptible from each other, because what I have got here if you look closely, is three slightly different tones, which is fantastic. Um, but as they dry, the colours will start to sort of rush to the edge of the wet section and create a beautiful crisp layer. And that is what we need for painting white watercolour petals. So, I am going to begin by painting these lovely white flowers now I'm so sorry but we've got to take one off and have a little look so we've got one two three four five petals on the outside and then on the inside we've got more something more like seven so I'm going to begin doing I'm going to do an open flower and I'm going to do some on the side as well but I'm going to begin with an open flower I've got a size two brush so let's bring this up. I'm going to have an open flower here. So I'm going to put a circle in with pencil and I'm going to have a sort of, oh, I'll have an open flower here as well. And then over here we're going to have a curved 
angled away blossom. Okay, so you're just going to have to trust me that this is actually paint going on the page. Um, and I'm going to start up here and my petals will overlap into the central circle there and then as we can see these petals have a slightly sort of frilled edge about them so when we finish them off we're not going to do it too smoothly we're going to allow the brush to leave a frilled edge and now I'm going to do two more that sort of sit a little bit spaced from that first one And these will be quite hard to see at this point, but they will dry nice and crisp. Okay, and now, because this one's a little bit close so it's overlapping, I'm gonna have to wait till the previous flower is dry. I'm gonna do this one here. Now, if we're looking from the side, we can see some petals, but not all of them. So we can pop in one. And then I'm going to pop in one there. We'll have another overlapping when they're dry. So delicate blossoms are largely to do with a bit of a waiting game with translucent layers that are all just going to crisp up as they dry. So this first layer of petals is now dry. I was able to add in that little one in the meantime and so now we can move on to our next layer which is going to be the sort of the petals in the gaps and you can see that they've really sort of uh, come out with a bit of colour now these petals now they've dried up if you need to keep on sort of adding a little bit more colour in that's absolutely fine, but just remember to really, really water it right down so that you're working with such a dilute colour. Okay, and because they're so dilute, these petals will look lovely showing up on top of the ones you've previously painted. Now, because we have five petals, we're only overlapping in two sections. So that little section there remains unfilled. Um, and I'm gonna put in, so I'd be careful here, putting in this petal, making sure we don't get too involved in that one up there. I'm going to paint this one in as if it was underneath that one there. And that's looking nice. So that's our first layer of blossom petals. I mean, we could, yeah, no, I think that's good. We, you could possibly sort of tuck a little one in there, but really that's quite enough. So whilst that dries, we can have a look at the colour of the stem here. Now it's got a, underneath, it's interesting, there's a, there's a sort of dusky bark. I'll just move this round. There's a pale and shadowy bark color that then has this beautiful sort of red tree in there as well. So we're gonna sort of have a mixture of a warm branch with a burnt sienna mixed in with a much more shadowy pale brown and blue mix. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to sort of build up this stem with sort of bits of blend because it's quite a gnarly old bit of branch. So what's quite nice is leaving in some bits of unpainted space as well. 
And even though these colours are dark, I'm not worried about sort of going too concentrated with them. Especially for the bits where we want to get a slightly paler finish anyway. So I'm just working my way up and if I want to get a little bit more sort of concentrated colour in there, I just take it straight from the palette. And then these little sort of buds, I like to do a sort of back and forth with my brush sort of to get the texture there. It sort of fills up nicely. And then we've got some sepals in a lovely warm colour here. And then I'm going to let those dry just a little bit more and keep carrying up on up the branch. So it's nice, this kind of um, sort of loose watercolour approach actually is creating something that's really quite detailed looking. It's just about trusting that your brush can make textures as well as sort of colouring things in, I suppose. You can very much draw with your brush. Now at this point we're going to have a flurry of leaves, so we need to just let that sit and dry for a minute. But the great thing is, is whilst we were doing that, our petals at the top have dried, I believe. Yep, little finger test. That's looking nice, so we can get on with those in a minute. But I do want to just talk about the colour of these leaves because there's a sort of hint of sort of peachy pink going on in there. Even though this is a white cherry blossom, I'm going to get some green gold. I'm going to begin putting in some watercolour leaves but this colour here is going to serve really nicely as the sort of warm tone I'm going to pop in. So starting with this and then just dropping in. It's very, very faint. It's not sort of too overpowering. And we'll have a leaf coming down here. So nothing's sort of getting too involved with each other yet because it's all quite wet. But it is nice to be able to drop it in. pointy curly ends to the leaves and then I can see some sort of very fine serrated edges on these leaves so what we can do with a nice small brush whilst it's still wet So that's going to be a really nice basis for our little leaves and we'll probably add in a few more once that's dried. Okay, time to get back to these petals. So move that back round. And we are going to start to add the petals that sort of 
are a bit more sort of standing up and a bit more frilly and tightly packed in. So I'm going to change my water over because even though my water isn't that sort of murky, I just think it's really important that we don't sort of disturb our colours too much. And this time, well, we've got this flower here, which we are going to see the petals sort of over the other side from the outer petals. So we're just going to sort of paint, start painting in the tips. Like that, you see. But with these ones here, the open flowers, we are going to add in flowers sort of over the top. So if I look at that, I'm sort of seeing frilly kind of teardrops, I suppose, stretching up from the middle. And I'm going to be very careful not to make them touch each other and end up with one big blob in the middle of our cherry blossom and we can do another layer of these once we're done if we feel the need for some more but everything is still coming out from the center Just got to remember that this flower is going to sit behind that one. Okay, definitely time for a bit of a slow down up there and let them dry. Um, we can add our little sort of sepal to our bud. So I'm going to use a little bit of the sort of paler, more dilute colour there and then I will just very, very carefully, gently blend those two together and we'll allow that to dry and come back in for some more detail. So these have dried now and you can see again, now they've crisped up, they look really lovely and they show up on their own. So we're just gonna have one last layer of these little petals and so this time you can have a bit of fun with it that they can poke out sort of wherever you want on this one whether they're overlapping or you can paint them in sort of behind nice and then in the sort of open flower ones there are one or two more petals technically so if we just want to sort of pop in one or two more I'm now using my smaller brush just so I'm not overloading things Okay, so we're going to leave that, that is the petals done now, so that's fantastic. And we can now just go back down and have a little bit more of a play around with the detail on the bottom of 
the, the branches and the stems. So I've got a slightly more concentrated uh, dark brown here. And I'm just sort of using it to add a little bit of texture to the edges. And also little sort of streaks that give a nice kind of dry bark, a bit like this bit here. So just have a sort of play around filling up your branch with sort of new details and new little nuggets of colour and things. And I can also see really faintly the tiniest bit of a sort of green moss that's just lurking on the branches. It might also be the beginning of some new growth. And then this brings us up to our little leaves, budding leaves. So I'm just having a look here, just making sure I'm getting all the detail. And we can add some slightly more concentrated leaf shapes now. So I'm going to turn my palette round. And get some green and just get it really quite concentrated here and I'm going to add in a few more little leaves just sprouting out from the base here and then with a smaller brush I can just sort of blend those down in and then also get that very delicate serrated edge So all I'm doing now is just sort of using a little bit of wetness, a little bit of the green to just colour in sort of one half of the leaf and that is another way of getting a bit more detail onto a leaf without sort of adding leaf lines and things and again we can do it down here to the bud. lovely. Okay we're nearly there, we just need to get our flowers with some central sort of bits and pieces in there and some stalks. So let's get the stems in first so we know what we're working with. Um, so I've decided that this flower is going to be sort of the main event and I just need to try and see where on earth I've painted the petals in. 
Oh yeah, I can see there's one there, so the, the stem is going to come like that. So it's coming over the top of this flower. This stem here, and I think we'll have them coming down inside this little collection. And then we'll have this one coming over the top as well. And it's great because this one gives us the opportunity to put the sepals in. So you can see here this sort of broadening at the top of the stem. Which will then spread out into these little sort of star points. Whilst we're here, we'll get a tiny bit of a shadow and just drop it in there whilst it's still wet. Now the centre of the cherry blossom, if I just fold down these petals, oh, and a little fly goes running, we can see we've got filaments and anthers and the stamen in the middle. So we're going to pop those in. I'll just send my little fly on his way. There he goes. Okay. So we're only going to see the very sort of tops of the filaments on the flower from the side. So you might see one or two little lines, but not a huge amount. What we will see though, and I'm sort of using an orange and I'm gonna mix with a bit of yellow. So we'll see a few attached to the lines, but then of course we can just do a few clusters. And that looks rather nice. But for our centre, if we look really, really closely, you can see absolute tiniest, weeniest bits of the green sepal sort of poking through. And that's gonna help us just define the centre of our flower. And then we're going to pop in our little anthers, which are the little dots. And I'm going to place them clustered around the place, so more solidly in the middle, so I might use a slightly stronger orange in the middle. And then I'm going to use this green. Actually, no, we need it to be a little lighter. Go back to the palette. There we go. For the stamen that is in there somewhere.
and then we're just going to let that dry and we'll do a little bit more detail in there but in the meantime we can finish off little bits of detail on the rest of our piece and a bit of shadow so I want to put in a little bit of this orangey brown colour into the sepals here because you can really see it right there it's almost like a copper kind of colour and then some faint leaf lines in that coppery colour as well up the leaf And now, time to mix up a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to use blue and brown. And if you are wondering about a list of the colors that I'm using and a list of the brushes also, you can find that in the episode notes below. Now, this is a very, very delicate flower, so we don't want to use too heavy a shadow, but it is also something that really brings a piece to life. So, I'm gonna start at the bottom, working our way up, building our courage, <laughs> and then just on the underside of these leaves. You can always put some shadow on and then clean off your brush and sort of add just a little bit of water and, and spread it around. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the page a little bit. A little bit of shadow at the top of the stem there. And then just a little bit to help define it down into the leaves. And then, and this seems like an awful lot of detail, but it makes a difference. I'm going to just use a very small brush to capture the tiniest bit of shadow on the underside of these because then it starts to help us sort of place them a bit, even though we haven't got filament lines connecting them. With this one, we have got a few lines connecting them, which we can just help highlight, but it, yeah, it's these open face flowers that we just do a little curl of the detail. Don't have to do it on all of them. So all that's left is to rub out the pencil and then we'll have a beautiful little white cherry blossom. The pencil is all rubbed out, the painting is dry, and there we have one very delicate but effectively layered up using translucent layers of watercolour, a white cherry blossom double petal flower. 
Thanks so much for watching. I'm sure we are going to be revisiting the cherry blossom and blossoms of all kinds, so keep your eyes peeled. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.